So have you noticed they're no longer talking about Ukraine, Russia that much? And by the way, if you listen to the mainstream media, Ukraine is crushing Russia. Like, oh my God, the war is already over with Putin's begging for them to stop. That's how the mainstream media is selling it. And if you look at New York Times story, August 2023, there's a story that came out saying 500,000 people have died, 300,000 from Russia, 200,000 from uh, Ukraine. But then if you read a story from Zero Hedge, it'll say 400,000 people have died from Ukraine. And on top of that, very interesting thing that Ukraine did, they have roughly 2 million soldiers at the beginning of the war. There's claims that they've lost already 500,000 soldiers. And according to Military Chronicle, Ukrainian authorities will soon be able to bury about one and a half million people. Why? So here's a country that's got roughly 37 million people living there. You have two million soldiers. You're going against Russia. You're getting money. You have hundreds of billions of dollars of money. You're coming around. The greatest beggar of all time, Zelensky. The greatest fundraiser of all time, Zelensky. Whatever category you want to put him in. But you do one and a half million dollars. And then Janet Yellen, who is supposed to know economy and money and numbers of what America can afford, comes out and says, America can certainly afford to stand with Israel and to support Israel's military needs. And we also can and must support Ukraine in its struggle against Russia. Yellen said, adding that the U.S. economy is doing extremely well. So so based on that quote, one would say what Janet Yellen is saying, as long as you got money, you're going to be able to do, you know, and fight the war. We can do both, but no, no problem. Great. I have money. I'm about to potentially buy 15 acres of land here. Just because I have 15 acres of land that I buy with money, does it mean day one I can go into work in the office? No, I got to build the 15 acres of land into our headquarters. How long is that going to take? 18 months, 24 months, permits, you know, all this other supplies that I got to get. So watch what this other person who's a president of roughly an $8 billion company that's in the uh, industry of selling weapons said, here's Eric Lee, a 30-year Consberg veteran who was a president of the company's defense unit on November, said the following, he was torn a factory he said i've never seen anywhere near so much demand of people wanting to order product what do you mean you've never seen so much demand and by the way what's interesting about this is new customers though will have to wait according to what he's saying it'll take two years to make one of these surface air missiles and there's already a multi-year backlog so two years if you're the first customer if you're not it's multi-year which may take four five, six years to get them. And even a bipartisan organization in America that gets money from a bunch of different people, including 25% of the money from the government, did a simulation, a war game simulation, published in early 2023, of how the U.S. would respond to a Chinese invasion of Taiwan. The Center for Strategic and International Studies estimated America would run out of all important long-range anti-ship missiles ready You know within how long? Not a quarter, not a year, not a month, within a week. So what is Janet Yellen talking about? And why is Ukraine preparing to bury one and a half million people when you're only 37 million people living there? Who knows? We're going to talk about that today. Okay, so if you give value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let me give you a couple timelines here on what's going on. January 19, 2024, Chairman of NATO's Military Committee, Admiral Rob Bauer, said that although NATO and member governments are ready in themselves for conflict with Putin's regime, civilians must realize that they also have a role to play. This is January 19, 2024 just recently then january 21st europe must prepare for war with russia military expert warns they're not giving a name who this person is they're just warning hey can't tell you who i am anonymous but here's what you have to be ready for this is january 21st then january 23rd ukraine spy chief not even conceivable that we can win without massive mobilization not even conceivable that they can win without massive mobilization what does that really mean let's take a look at ukraine's current military. Now keep this in mind, what I believe in is the the whole concept of fog of war, which means both sides can give you whatever stats they want to give you. You got to kind of try to check both of the sides' credibility and believe a little bit of both sides and be paranoid and questionable about both sides, whatever they may be saying. They're always going to say, we have less people that died, and they have so many people that have died. Every side wants to say that. So according to Colonel McGregor, there are thousands of wounded Ukrainians being left to die on the battlefield, growing number of Ukrainian commanders and troops refusing orders to conduct suicide attacks against heavily fortified Russian positions. Ukrainian soldiers are surrendering in masses to Russia. Hospitals overflowing with wounded. Ukraine government plans to radically increase the number of women serving in the military. And remember how earlier I talked about the fact that Military Chronicle, Ukrainian authorities will soon be able to bury one and a half million people. Watch this. The leader in the growth of the territory was a cemetery in Cherkasy. Its area increased by 670 
1,000 square meters just to be able to bury potentially one and a half million people. Why are they doing that? According to Rusi, which would sound like a Russia think tank, it's actually not a Russian think tank, the Royal United Services Institute, which if you want to know a little bit more about these guys, is a defense and security think tank headquartered in London, UK, and it was founded in 1831 by the Duke of Wellington, Arthur Wellesley. So there is no benefit for them defending Russia, but watch what they say. Russia's getting stronger and Europe's getting weaker. Russia's military supply situation has been steadily improving. Its factories are standardizing around fewer type of tanks Artillery howitzers and UAVs resulting in steadily rising production figures from around 40 long-range missiles per month at the start of the invasion. Russia is now producing 100 missiles per month. Artillery ammunition production has almost doubled. Recently supplemented by over 1 million shells and hundreds of howitzers from North Korea, factories have also been set up in Iran to add resilience and additional capacity to Russia's rearmament drive after the vast losses in material and ammunition expenditure of the past 18 months of war. Russia is preparing for a long war, aiming to grind down Ukraine and exhaust the capacity and will of its Western supporters to supply the vehicles, ammunition and weapons it needs to keep fighting successfully. Russia's government has announced plans for a 68% increase in defense spending to 6.5% of GDP next year during the Cold War. Soviet spent Spending on defense was far higher than this, reaching 21% of GDP by 1985, and still took decades to arguably bring about the collapse of USSR. So, so an independent think tank from UK that's been around since 1831 is saying Russia's getting stronger, Europe's getting weaker, Ukraine's getting weaker. Why would they say such a thing like this? Well, let's, let's take a look at Europe to see how Europe's saying. European industrial capacity for weapon production eroded after the Cold War. European nations limited stockpiles and productions for aid to Ukraine. EU struggling to supply 1 million artillery shells to Ukraine. US 70% of NATO's defense spending in 2022 and EU's defending spending up 20% in the past decade. Russia, China up 300 and 600 percent. EU is up 20 percent in the last decade. Russia's up 300. China's up 600. British military, highest rated European military, ranks below Russia, China, and India. Only 150 deployable tanks, 12 long range artillery pieces. Let's look at France. Second highest rated European power, ranked below South Korea, Pakistan, and Japan. 90 heavy artillery pieces. Denmark, no heavy artillery, submarines, air defense systems. German military, look how powerful they used to be compared to what they are today. At the end of Cold War, they had 500,000 soldiers in West Germany, 300,000 in East Germany. West Germany alone had more than 7,000 battle tanks by the 1980s. Today, only 180,000 personnel, and they went from 7,000 tanks to 200 tanks, only half of which are likely operational according to government officials. The country's industry can make only about three tanks a month. That's 36 a year, these officials said. Germany's army has enough ammunition for two days of battle. That's what Germany's got. Two days of battle. Germany was feared years ago. Today, no one fears Germany. Two days of battle is what they got. Netherlands, last tank unit disabled in 2011. That's 13 years ago. Poland, plans to spend more than 4% of its annual economic output on defense in 2024, almost double what it did in 2024. Poland could have the strongest conventional forces in Europe in two or three years, said Benz Nemet, the academic program director of the Advanced Command Staff course at the Defense Academy of the UK, the country's top postgraduate military program. So there's a couple things here to keep in mind. Number one, fog award. Nobody knows what's going on. Even the stats I I gave you. You don't know 100%. I don't know 100%. I'm simply giving you the numbers based on what somebody else got. And those people got it from somebody on the inside that may be given the information based on some motive. Nobody knows. However, let's assume what we're reading here is correct. If it is correct, what's the difference between EU, Russia, and US? Here's what's the difference. Russia has their own military industrial complex. They produce weapons. They don't need to rely on the companies that we use. They do their own thing. And they have other allies that also hate America and NATO that are helping Ukraine, such as Iran and China. So if they need to lean on somebody, they got plenty of people to go to. EU, since they started what they're doing with the NATO, what, ha what has happened to EU? They've all sat there and said, guys, we don't need to spend all this money into our military. We don't need to put that money into our budget. You know why? Why? America, let those idiots spend the money and they'll protect us. We don't need to spend it. Let them pay more of it. What are you doing? You guys put the money. You know, it's kind of like a person goes to a restaurant and you're out with people and everybody knows you're the rich one and everyone goes like this. Don't reach your pocket. Let him think of it. You know, it's like time. Everybody knows you've eaten dessert. Everything's over with. And everybody goes like this. Oh, America touched the wallet. Okay. 
Great, fantastic, awesome, this is so great. That's all they're doing. They know the U.S. is gonna reach their pocket to pay the most, for what? Because of USSR back in the days and that's why we started it? Why don't you guys strengthen your military, Germany? Why don't you strengthen your military, France? Why don't you strengthen your military, UK? Why don't you guys strengthen your military? Why are you relying on America to do this for you? Now, U.S. has their own military industrial complex, but just because you got money. And Janet Yellen says, oh, we can handle both. Don't worry, we got all the money. This is where money doesn't matter. Imagine when war breaks out and there's a civil war and everybody's killing each other in a city. And a billionaire comes on and says, guys, I'm a billionaire. How much money do you need? The guy says, I don't give a shit about your money. I need guns. What do you have? I don't have any guns, but I got billions. No one cares about your money during a civil war. They care if you have weapons. And Janet Yellen's saying, we got money. Don't worry, there are no weapons to buy, Janet Yellen. It takes years to build them. That is a problem when we're going out saying, yeah, let's give them some tanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take some of these missiles. No, no. America's getting weak when we do this because we're worried about EU and all these other guys. Very problematic. I'm a little bit too paranoid on this topic, and I think you need to be as well because nobody has all the information. Mainstream's telling us one thing. We don't really know what's going on. The fog of war, I think, is really effective, in effect, with specifically to Ukraine and Russia war. If you got value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you want to learn more about this topic, specifically NATO, like what's the history behind NATO, click here to watch this video. You're going to learn a lot about NATO. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye.